أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم بمددكم ونظركم سيدي يا رسول الكريم يا حبيب العظيم مدد يا سيدي يا سلطان الأولياء الشيخ محمد الفيز الداغستاني سيدة الشيخ محمد ناظم عادل حقاني مولانا الشيخ هشام كباني الشيخ عدنان كباني الشيخ محمد عادل مولانا خالق الخج دواني صاحب زمان سيد محمد المهدي عليه السلام وروح الله سيدنا عيسى عليه السلام سيف الله سيدنا عليه السلام ثم سيدنا بكر الصديق سيدنا عمر سيدنا عثمان إمام الحسن عليه السلام إمام الحسين عليه السلام وسيداتنا فاطمة عليه السلام وسائر وسادتنا والصديقين الفاتحة الكشف يا رسول الكريم حبيب العظيم Inshallah Jumma Mubarak to everyone inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. InshaAllah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Atiullah, Atiya Rasulun al-Amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself and abdukal ajis of da'ifu, miskeen, or zalim, or jihad. And but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence. Alhamdulillah that Allah granted us this life of tariqah and this life of pursuing the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and keeping the company of truthful servants true in their actions and in their deeds. Alhamdulillah for all those joining us online and trying their best to serve and live a life of service and putting their faith in action. And alhamdulillah one reminder of the fifth holy month has to do with the reality of the five senses and that this way of marifa has a complete discipline. That the fourth month and the reality of the four elements of the body means that everywhere we look there must be an immense reality. When we enter into the fifth lunar month from all the other teachings also reminding ourselves that we have five senses and the disciplining of these senses and the, the dress of these senses all comes in line with what we're trying to achieve and the openings of the levels of the heart inshaAllah that the qalb and the reality of opening hearing, that this whole reality has to open with the key upon the samina wa atana that we hear and we try our best to obey. And that shaitan has an immense attraction to the ears so that the servant doesn't submit to the will of Allah A great part of this path and the understanding of things to open because there's so many things to understand of its realities and we go back now to some of the basics but they're not really basics. These are the doorways in, in which to open a reality and say that I want a reality for, for my heart to open. Then the first look that has to come is upon the hearing. The shaitan is taking the hearing of mankind so that they hear him. And they don't hear the Divine, they don't hear Prophet and that they don't hear the ulul am. And what he does try to hear is only the nafs and the ego of people. Our battle is in our hearing. If we want our qalb and our heart to open the battle is in the hearing and how to safeguard the hearing, how to struggle and fight for the hearing becomes an immense struggle that every day when I try to sit and to meditate and to understand that to clean my hearing, clean what I'm hearing, don't listen to sounds and, and things that would bring an agitation into my heart because the doorway to the body is through the hearing and to the soul. This passage to the soul has the reality of hearing. And that we try to emulate the way of Prophet for samina wa atana, that we hear and we obey. From what Allah wanted from us, what Prophet wants for us and for what ulul am inspire for us. 
our life is a great struggle in hearing the guidance and trying our best to obey and shaitan's game is to fight that hearing and to block the hearing of the believer. This is then the immense reality and struggle in our path. The next sense that shaitan is playing with and related to the sirr and that has to do with the great struggle that for us to enter into the true battle of taking on knowledges with the qalb and hearing the reality and hearing what is required for us, the next level of sense has to do with the seeing. That if the hearing is to open and the objective is to open the seeing then that seeing has to be purified and has to be towards the heavens and the direction of the soul and not the seeing of the dunya. That what we see from dunya and come to conclusions with or not the reality and they can be the great delusion of dajjal and what dajjal is trying to achieve. So as a believer struggling to bring their hearing into submission as they're beginning that struggle then they're training to bring their seeing into submission. Hence the importance of continuously talking about the tafakkur, the contemplation, the way of contemplation so that to discipline the sight, that to spend a time in which we close our eyes in an ever more distracted dunya because shaitan is hoping you can never close your eyes. That to put so much images and these images create energies what they call I think endorphins and, and, and sort of a, a chemical within the body that keeps the mind continuously stimulated and for hours they're engaged in just images. And the great fight now even more so is in how to close the eyes, sit and to close and meditate the eyes so that when this physical vision stops the training on how to open the spiritual vision. And as soon as you begin to train on how to open your spiritual vision you realize that everything your eyes captured have to be cleaned. It's all being absorbed and written onto the hard drive. And the reason why the great masters explain to us is that keep your vision down, that lower your gaze from Qur'an Allah gives us to lower our gaze, Prophet teaches to lower our gaze and all awliyaullah were taught that, nazar bal qadam that keep your eyes upon your feet means be busy with where you're going in life and what you're doing, worry about your grave not the graves of others. So our life is then a great struggle in taming the eyes and that becomes then the understanding because the eyes if they left to look at dunya they become hungry for dunya. And that's why Prophet gave to the believers, lower your gaze. Whatever your eyes capture will enter your heart and will increase your dunya. When physical people speak, they speak of physical desires and they say, oh the men have more desires than women, it's actually the reverse because 99% of jahannam will be filled with women because of the spiritual energy. That when people are looking now with their eyes they're not necessarily looking at the same thing. But that doesn't mean that the sickness and illness is not entering. That when people look with their eyes they are capturing dunya. If they capture dunya the desire enters into the heart is the spiritual ramification. If a man looks at something physical through the eyes He's capturing a desire within his heart, making his heart to become sick and moving towards zina. When a female looks through her eyes she's absorbing dunya, the desire for dunya 
the insatiable appetite to acquire dunya, the fashion and, and everything that is being advertised to that race of people, the gender of people. So shaitan is, is marketing to all of these people based on their age, their gender, everything so that to increase their heart towards these desires and take them away from Allah So this is the great sickness that is coming for the eyes and it's not related to one particular gender of people and they're the only ones to worry about it. No, it's that every eye now is coming up and what it's seeing is being entered into the heart and if these desires into the heart they like a magnet push them away from Allah For the one whom struggling with their eyes doesn't mean that you'll, you'll reach a point of, of the eyes not seeing anything. But that's the sickness of someone who absolutely doesn't work upon their eyes. What's wanted here is to recognize the sickness of the eyes and as a result to make istighfar, to close the eyes, to find a time in which to meditate and asking Allah asking Prophet to take these out, take these images out of my heart, take the desire for these items, these issues, these things that shaitan is casting into me, take them out of me. So this is the important, not the, the, what the reaction of people will be or what they're doing or each gender will be doing but whatever it is that being cast into the heart of people by the sight of their eyes and the power of their eyes, shaitan sends every person exactly what's necessary for them to be pushed away from Allah Because physical people they don't put the ramifications of spiritual processes. They think only on a phys physical material level but everything's based on the soul and energy. Shaitan is operating purely with the understanding of energy. So he cast into the eyes what's necessary to distance that person from Allah And that becomes a great struggle that everyone understands what they're looking at, understands what's not appropriate for them whether it's a desire to buy this, do this, accompany this, put this on, put that on. Whatever it is the concept of the meditation is to close the eyes, find a time which to close, make istighfar asking Allah asking Prophet to cleanse my eyes, take away the desire, take away what shaitan is casting into my heart of these desires that distance me from your Divinely Presence and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad So these are the immense struggles. And then from the sir sir means the opening of the world of light has to do with then the reality of touch and what we call sense and hawa. This is just a summary for us to go over because those whom studying the Lataif al will understand they're reading it in each chapter of the Lataif al But for us to understand the importance of the fifth month and the five senses and that our life is to acknowledge these senses and that how am I fighting on a daily basis with these senses that every day I'm struggling to hear. I want to hear what the shaykh is teaching me, I want to hear the guidance and the directions that are coming and shaitan is distracting me from hearing it, really not absorbing it and not implementing in my life. And then no doubt if we don't sit and he's going to cast into my eyes, how could I possibly hear if he keeps throwing me things into my eyes and those things that he throws distance me. Like a balloon he's pushing a distance between me and the Divine, the Presence. And then I keep feeling, oh Shaykh I don't know this is not really working for me, I don't really feel anything. Then no doubt because the struggle is to hear, you're not going to understand to hear especially if you have no discipline upon the eyes. So how can somebody understand if their eyes are pushing them away from the Divine Reality? That's why these disciplines are all put on at one time. As soon as they sit for tafakkur they have to close their eyes. The sense of touch and sensation 
means the struggle of the sense of touch has to do with becoming latif and subtle. That when you train yourself to be subtle means you put yourself in positions of pain. When you sit and meditate you don't make yourself comfortable. At home when you sit for your tafakkur and contemplate you sit on your knees. You put a sense of pain into your body so that to bring a hyper alert state upon ourselves. The hawa, the desire and the desirous character within ourselves, we like to make everything very comfortable. As soon as we close our eyes to meditate it's a sleeping time because immediately the nafs grabbed and put the person to sleep. So the sense of working upon touch is to achieve a sense of sensitivity and that comes with the realities of pain. That when you train in difficult conditions and you forego the difficulty, some people may have pain just sitting in a chair and they sit and they meditate. It brings you to a sensitivity of touch and not to make everything so pampering in which the nafs will suffocate you and put you to sleep. When they become sensitive to touch means their reality is very latif, their heart is very sensitive, they feel energies, they feel emotions because they tore away the outer hardness of their nafs because the more you pamper the harder your nafs becomes, right? So we look at the super elite, it's like they, will, they want to walk on cotton, why? Because they have huge shells of their nafs that have built like 10 foot walls inside them that the soul is hidden. And they have no sensitivity, they feel nothing, they have no empathy towards anything. The one whom puts themselves in difficulty, why Prophet slept on bamboo so that the sleep was not something deep and was put into difficulty when the Sahabi kiram would look and see the bamboo marks they were very upset. Said, let us buy you, put together the most beautific mattress for you. He says, no then I can't wake up for fajr as a teaching for us. But this had to do with the fight and the struggle against the nafs and the sense of desire, to lower the desires. The much, as much as we can lower the desire as much as the sensitivity will begin to increase. So pain in our lives increases sensitivity. Allah sends to people different levels, different tests of pain and difficulty, heartbreak. All of them increase our sensitivity towards the Divine and this is a Allah's gift. So when you have a difficulty and at night you're crying onto your Lord, this is a gift because your heart has immense empathy, is, is, is da is running towards the Divinely Presence. The one whom has no worries, nothing at all to care about never cries at night to Allah So this is then becomes like a shell of concrete and a punishment against them. So everything has a hikmah and a wisdom, difficulty in life, pain, stress, anything that cracks the system and makes us to become more subtle. Especially if they're in practices of tafakkur and trying to bring out their soul. If they're not then they're just in difficulty and they don't understand why they're in difficulty. But in the reality of zalzala was what? That what's hidden inside of us she wants to come out, the reality of the soul wants to come out. Only by cracking convulsions, contractions like the earth and like the womb, only by these contractions can a reality be brought out. So then understanding pain, difficulty, sadness in life, all of them were means in which to draw close to Allah because He loves the servant. 
When he doesn't love the servant, he doesn't put anything upon them and he give them like a rope to hang themselves because they're far from the Divine, the Presence. And you say, if you give a person enough rope they can hang themselves as a saying. But when Allah loves the servant, He keeps drawing them near with testing, with testing, with testing. Why? Because they become near to the Divinely Presence and as a result of training they know that's the time to cry out to Allah communicate to Allah ask for the intercession of Prophet So then this becomes then the reality of the sirr and the reality of touch. But the reality of the khafa has to do with then the sense of smell. And these are all at the same time the trainings because in our life everything's happening at once. We don't go through phases of, oh now something happened, now something… Every day and every moment of our life we're being tested, we're, we're hearing sounds and music, we're being bombarded with our eyes. So at every five senses are under attack every day, all day, all day, night, all day and all night. This, the subtlety of the khafa reality has to do with the secret and the ability to rise. Because that has to do with the khafa and how to leave the reality of the earth. So at that level the sense of smell is important. It means then the sensitivity to smell. One whom is, is not disturbed by bad smell is not a good sign. Because you come across people say, can't they smell how bad that is? You say, no, something's off. Smell has to do with your closeness to the angelic reality. The more subtle the servant is becoming, the more subtle they are and all of their senses are hyper alert. As a result their sense of smell becomes extremely sensitive. So immediately their smell detects good and bad. That which smells bad is offensive to their energy and they want to stay away from that. That which smells good calls their soul. So they have spiritual experience by smell and that becomes the immensity of that importance. When we fragrance ourselves and we fragrance the home it's to hide badness and bad energies and to attack bad energies depending upon what fragrance people are using. The oud, ispan, they actually fight negative energies. And that those beings of negative energy when they smell a span they begin to choke, they can't breathe in that and they have to leave. The concept of smell and the sensitivity to smell has to do with the servant's angelic reality. So say cleanliness is close to godliness. So that which a person is elevating then I, the identity of them would be good smell, they fragrance themselves and the smell of their breath, their body, their fragrance is extremely important. To be conscious of the smell of your breath, to be conscious of your fragrance and your, your energy that you're putting out, they become hyper alert to it. This is important in the progress and the realities of smell. When a person is not conscious of it again has to go with negative energies and, and, and not having that awareness because tafakkur means an awareness of myself. Tafakkur is not just meditating, tafakkur is an entire science of our reality. When I'm a person of tafakkur I sit and, and identify what do I smell like? 
If I have a bad fragrance, why do I have a bad fragrance? Is it an energy? Then I have to soak myself to take away negative energies. If it's something that has to do with my cleanliness and my grooming of myself, then I have to groom myself so that my body is clean, my fragrance is clean. For women they can be conscious of fragrance but they shouldn't exhibit fragrances that would attract the opposite gender. But to be conscious of it, not to be a bad smelling person where you don't care how bad… if somebody doesn't care they smell bad, it's a sign that they don't have any consciousness of, of negative energy because then you could go around anything that smells bad and you're not disturbed by it. I guess this is the point we're trying to bring out. But when you're hypersensitive to smell, anything that's not smelling right you refrain from it there's something wrong in that area and you try to keep your life always where the smell is pleasant, the smell is good because it become more and more important. You can enter into a space and realize there's something not right, not, not holy there because these negative beings have very foul smells. So becoming more sensitive has to do with entering more into the angelic realm. And that's why Prophet described about fragrances. In the holy month of Ramadan don't eat certain things that offend the angels. Why? Because Ramadan is a very angelic month. So fragrance for Prophet was extremely dear and had an immense reality. Why? Because this has to do with angelic realities and the realities of those whom are operating from their soul. But until we get to the complete angelic reality, we have to live a life as continuously battling negative energy, negative fragrances, negative smells so that to keep ourselves away from that. Some people may enter into a space and just a negative smell and they say, okay, say, it's not okay. When there's a negative smell or people are smoking and doing things that are not appropriate, take yourself into a different area, different section. So that to keep yourself always with the good fragrance, good smells because at least we know then there's an uh, abundance of angelic presence inshaAllah in those environments. So that becomes sensitivity to smell. The last and, and most powerful of them is the sense of taste. And the tariqah is called the way of dhawq of taste. So traditional Islam you would study what madhab you study, where you were taught from, what teacher you had and they would ask you then what was your way of taste with which tariqahs you were with because the tariqah came and taught you the way of taste. To taste is now the way of haqqaiq and that's what Mawlana Shaykh would describe, I can hold up a cup to you and I can read a book about this. I can read a very nice detailed book, this beautiful cup, it has a handle this cup, it has a, a, a beautiful molding inside. The fluid here has like a caramel color but it doesn't really taste caramel and it tastes very sweet. But describing this to you has no value to you because now everyone's imagination is going to have a different imagination about this. For somebody who sees this caramel color could think, oh this must be like coffee, very bitter, I don't… Somebody may say, no this I think it's like soda so probably very sweet, I think I would like that. So in, in 50 people watching, 300 people watching, 300 opinions of what's in here. So we're not a way of books, reading a book about the cup reading a book about what's in this cup but the haqqaiq of thou can taste. Why? So that the sensitivity of what's being taught to us, taste has to do with haqqaiq in which with your meditate and you're opening all the senses, the shaykh is teaching and you're meditating on the teachings then you're, I think I understood what he said. you tasted it.
Either whether Allah gives the student the khash a vision in which they begin to experience it. Because all five senses they're continuously fighting. So you're being… you're fighting in five directions simultaneous. So don't have to ask a question, Shaykh, is it the ears open, then the eyes open, then the nose opens? No, it's all five at all five directions, you're fighting in five directions. Literally shaitan promised six but for five senses all are being attacked at all times. So the taste is continuously being corrupted, so servants taste something bad. They eat bad, they talk bad, they drink bad, all of that's going to affect their lisan. So means if this is the cave of realities and this is the, the, the tongue of truth we're trying to inherit from, so be careful what enters into this cave. That's why eat good, drink good, talk good. Why? Because then with the salawats, the zikr, the salawat they say sweetens the mouth. But really what is the, the, a code for when somebody says that salawat sweetens the mouth means that their tongue begins to taste the haqqaiq. That their meditations, their understanding, Allah when He wants to grant you a taste, this is how you equate a, a sweet tongue in the world of life means Allah will let you taste that reality. Because you safeguarded what Prophet asked, safeguard your tongue and your desires and your lower part of your body, I guarantee for you pro- paradise. But what does that really mean is the code? Is if you safeguard your tongue, you're safeguarding the most powerful sense is taste. In which for Allah's sake we abstain, we abstain, we abstain, we clean our mouth, we talk with, with correctness, we act with correctness, Allah grant to us a taste of a reality. So that people go back and say, Shaykh after that talk I actually experienced something, I saw something, I had a vision of something, I had a dream of something. So that that ta- teaching became a haqq for you, the ilm that you got, the aim that you trained with and then Allah gave you a taste in which became a haqq for you. So the taste and the sense of taste has to do with the yaqeen al haqq yaqeen and opening up the, the truth of certainty and the certainty of truth. InshaAllah so Allah dress us and bless us with the immensities of these realities and how we can combat them on a daily basis to, to reach towards Allah's satisfaction. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzatan wa yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa bi sir Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.